Hey, what's happening? Paul Ingram here, Collie Center. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering a long time suggested video. Uh, a lot of people have been commenting and suggesting that I make this video of different training gear that is needed to get started in Filipino martial arts or to continue training in your Filipino martial arts. So if you have just kind of made your way to Kali, Eskrima, Arnis, um, all different terms of Filipino martial arts, if you just kind of found your way uh, to it and uh, you're training, you're picking up training with us or a different school style or system, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you've been training for a while or you're just kind of feeling like, Kali, man, this is just my calling, smash that thumbs up button and uh, let's go ahead and dive right on in to all the cool different training gear that we use. All right, so I'm gonna be uh, going over all this stuff here that's laid out all over the place. Just a big mess here on my back porch. And uh, basically there's kind of two schools of thought that I'm putting into this video. Uh, number one is we're gonna cover the most essential uh, Filipino martial arts training gear that I kind of see is pretty common regardless of the style or system or the school that you may be attending or looking to attend or anything like that. And then we're going to go into the expansion of what it's like training here at Kali Center and uh, all the different things that we get into and uh, different gear that you may need. All right, so first things first, starting off with everything is uh, simple, simple, simple rattan sticks. Uh, rattan is what we're looking to use when it comes to Filipino martial arts, when it comes to Kali, Eskrima, Arnis. And uh, we don't want to really be using hard wood. We want to be using rattan. Um, if you're starting off, Kali, and you do not have a pair of rattan sticks yet, you can still use a PVC pipe. You can use like a dowel rods and things when you're just kind of working out solo, figuring out some of the movements and just kind of learning some of the fundamentals. But when you start making contact with training partners or you're starting to do impact training and things like that, then you, you want to move away from the PVCs and the dowel rods and the hardwoods because those things over time are going to break and when they break they shatter and uh, I've personally seen thumb size um, arrowheads just dart right out of especially some of those hardwoods and those dowel rods. So with rattan, uh, rattan is a lot safer for multiple reasons. Um, one, it is better for the joints of the body when you get onto imp when you get into the impact training, uh, because the rattan absorbs a lot of the impact, uh, unlike a lot of the hardwoods. Uh, but the other thing about rattan is when it starts to get weak, uh, it kind of does more of this shedding type of thing. So to fix this, you can just wrap that with some electrical tape, give your stick a little bit more life. Um, but this is why we use the rattan is because it's less likely to actually break and then cause all these different shards. So it's going to kind of just shed its life away. Um, now that doesn't mean rattan cannot break. We have seen rattan sticks literally break in half. However, I have not yet personally seen out of my 20 plus years of, uh, training this stuff. I have not seen a sharp shard fly out of rattan. Uh, the only thing you kind of have to watch for as it's starting to shed like this is the small little rattan fibers that can get into your eyes and irritate your eyes. Um, but that's why we have eye protection and uh, obviously we just take care of uh, our training partners where if you start seeing this type of stuff, just tape it up or replace the stick. So uh, this is my outdoor uh, rain stick right now. So right now I'll train with it because it's not super bad condition yet. All right. Now, when you purchase your rattan sticks, um, you, know, you can grab them pretty much anywhere. Just kind of Google it. Um, you can Amazon it. But there are different grades of rattan. So you want to make sure that you're getting some good, solid rattan sticks. Uh, we do prefer uh, you know, keeping the skin on the sticks and uh, make sure that it's got a couple of the nodes, things like that. It just helps with the strength, durability of the sticks. Um, but there are some pretty cheap cuts out there. So there, there's different types of rattan. Um, if you're not sure what kind of rattan sticks to get, you can head over to collicenter.com. We do sell them. You can purchase them directly from us. 
Uh, I also have the recommendations from my partnership with i and Sports, who also has really good rattan sticks as well, uh, which I've been using them also over the years and everything too. So um, you can go ahead and pick up yourself a couple pairs of rattan. Uh, when you're ordering rattan sticks, I usually like to say, you know, just order two to three pairs of rattan. Um, don't just order one pair, order two or three because these are vine guys. The, these are natural fibers and things, so they are going to break. And again, there's different cuts of rattan. Sometimes you just get a crappy pair of sticks or one crappy stick and it just doesn't last long. And then other times, you get some really good cuts and it's just kind of one of those things unless you can grow your own rattan in your area and then you can go through the process of you know straightening them and fire hardening them and kind of doing all that stuff that's cool too all right so rattan sticks that's the most important you're going to find that all the way across all different styles systems schools of a uh, kali of filipino martial arts the second most common thing are training knives so most Filipino martial arts, at some point in your training, you're going to get to knife stuff. Uh, Filipino martial arts is very known for our knife uh, techniques and tactics. And uh, here at Kali Center, we like having two different types of training knives. The first type of training knife that we like to have is some sort of like rubber flexible training knife. These are really good. These are by Boker. Uh, Ronin also makes a pair of these uh, rubber flexible training knives. These are really good because they're very durable. I've had this one for, I don't know, maybe five years or something like that. And uh, they're just awesome. And they're nice and flexible, so they're a little bit forgiving, but you're still gonna feel it a little bit. Uh, we stay away from like the hard plastic ones when it comes to our sparring, uh, where we're just kind of going easy and trying out different tactics and things like that. Um, we like using these kind of flexible ones not really because of the slashes, but because of the thrusts. So this is what we like. Kind of reminds you of fencing gear, right? You want the flex in the blade. Um, the other thing, now, so you want a pair of those. Uh, you can go to like amazon.com and grab them. They're, they're really cheap. I think they're like 12 bucks or 14 bucks for a pair of them. And you only need to get one, one pair. The other types of training knives we like to have are some sort of, um, like aluminum training knives, metal training knives, wood training knives, something that's gonna give you a little bit more of a real type of feel. You know, that way you can kind of move around with them. And uh, they're really, really good for solo training. And we also get into contact sparring with these as well to kind of ramp up the realism and the feel a little bit more. All right, so find yourself a pair of uh, some sort of training knife when it comes to like aluminum, steel or wood uh, the material doesn't really matter much when it comes to that just kind of find something that you like all right um that right there is pretty standard across the board of different styles and systems different schools of thought when it comes to training and teaching filipino martial arts a pair of rattan sticks and a pair of training knives and that's going to pretty much get you through most of your training for a long, long time. Because then you got your single stick, your double stick, your knife, your spotty adaga, your double knife, right? And then when you get into empty hands training. So let's kind of move into some of the Kali Center gear. Most other schools probably do incorporate this gear as well, but this is where things kind of usually start to change a little bit, depending on school style and system. So for Kali Center, the next thing, we're gonna go over the safety gear and then we'll come back to the additional training weapons. So when it comes to uh, the safety gear, the number one thing is some sort of eye protection. Uh, whether it is uh, like safety glasses from the hardware store, we use those from time to time, especially when we're doing like knife training and stuff, like real close quarter knife stuff. Uh, this is why you see me in sunglasses a lot. This is just a nice cheap pair of sunglasses, plastic lenses. I don't like wearing my nice, you know, more pricey sunglasses with glass lenses and all that stuff. Um, 20 bucks or less, that's what I look for. Over time, they're probably gonna get broken or stepped on or something's gonna happen. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're, you, know, you don't have a pair of sunglasses, you're gonna be uh, heartbroken about you know, the dollars spent. So sunglasses, I like these, they're cheap. I don't even know what they are, I just look for something cheap that's uh, got a little bit of sun protection, plastic lenses, you're good to go. All right. 
hand protection. So when it comes to the sticks, when it comes to like doing the contact sparring stuff, we like using hockey gloves, just regular old hockey gloves. Uh, some people will use lacrosse gloves, however, uh, they just don't provide enough protection uh, when it comes to the sticks. They're fine for the knife sparring, but when it comes to the sticks, they just don't provide enough protection. So we like using the hockey gloves. You're still going to feel it through these. This doesn't stop the, uh, the impact from happening, but it definitely protects the hand. What we like about hockey gloves is that these will give you a full manipulation of the wrist. So they're really, really good. And, uh, and again, you have that protection. You just kind of have to watch the tip of the thumb. So you, you kind of have to tuck in the tip of the thumb if you don't want to get that whacked. Or just get good and protect your hand. All right, so uh, that's our hand protection as far as the weaponry goes. So typically, there's no point in buying a pair of hockey gloves and a pair of lacrosse gloves. A pair of hockey gloves, this is going to serve you for a long, long time. Uh, for some of the empty hands work, we will use some boxing gloves, especially because when we start getting into the destructions and things like that, the hockey gloves don't necessarily cut it all the time. So we go with some heavy boxing gloves, like 14 to 16 ounce hockey glo uh, boxing gloves, and uh, these will give you some good cushion so you can give some realistic attacks when you're training destructions and, uh, and all that type of stuff. All right. You can use those also for like stick sparring. You might just, there's usually a tab right here. You'll probably have to cut them out, but they're just not as uh, flexible and maneuverable as the hockey gloves. Of course, the uh, forever fencing mask is really good for when you're doing uh, some of that full contact sparring stuff. So having a good fencing mask, uh, this one is from Absolute Fencing. Um, you can check them out. They have their measurements and guides and all that stuff right there on their website. And uh, just go ahead and grab a fencing mask uh, when it comes time to uh, get into that. All right, so some of the uh, training gear here. One of the big things that we recommend at Collie Center to get is a pair of training bolos. And uh, these could be any kind of shape. They could be Ganunting style. They could be Talibong, Panuti style. doesn't really matter. We typically like using something between 15 to 18 inch blades. That's pretty standard for bolos. They could be aluminum, they could be steel, they could be composite, they can be wood. The material is not what's important. It's just having a good solid training bolo. So that way as you're learning the technical precision of things, you can know exactly where the cutting edge is at at all times. And make sure that you are delivering the strikes properly and you're not flattening out the blade or striking you know, way over to the side or anything like that. All the strikes are going forward to the opponent, presenting the blade edge and the proper uh, areas of the weapon. All right. Plus, that's going to help give you a feel of the blade, because at some point in training, you might want to get into moving around with a live blade to understand how uh, how this stuff really uh, really works. Because at Kali Center, everything here, different styles of Filipino martial arts have different schools of thought. Some styles focus mostly on the sticks and impact weaponry. Here at Collie Center, everything we do is focused on the blade. Okay. So uh, all, everything we're doing with the sticks, can be it comes right off of the blade. You can still use a stick or you can use the blade. All right, some other stuff that we have is uh, we have the classical daga or the long daga for our classical espadia daga. So there's two methods of espadia daga that we teach here at Collie Center. We have the, the uh, short knife, so we have that, the short knife version, and we also have what we refer to as the classical version where you have the more like a combat daga, a little bit longer daga. So you don't have to buy one, you don't have to try to hunt one down just as a rattan stick is getting worn out or something like that, just cut it down this proper size and you're good to go. So no money spent, no extra money spent there. Um, all right, some of the other things. Uh, at some point, you might be wanting to uh, grab some sort of live uh, bolo, either a Ganunting style, Talibong style, whatever the style is, doesn't really matter. Um, but you want to be grabbing some sort of live, uh, live bolo at some point in your training. Typically here at Kali Center, our kind of general rule of thumb is you want to be training for at least a year and a day under the proper supervision 
uh, and coaching in your training before you get to any kind of live blade uh, training. So you wanna make sure that you have good technical precision uh, and the proper handling skills uh, before messing around with a live blade because those accidents uh, sometimes only happen once. Um, obviously you have our, tr our real knives, right? And uh, this is why we wanna make sure we have some sort of solid training knife because at some point if you are training this stuff for self-defense purposes and you're looking at carrying a knife for self-defense, you're going to need to know how to operate your actual real weaponry. So that's why I have that on the table. All right. All right. Uh, some other stuff. Uh, here at Collie Center, you're going to at some point want like a rattan staff or some sort of like training spear because we do spear work. We do quite a bit of spear work actually. So you can grab like a training spear at some point. Uh, this is just like a, a wushu training spear out of wa uh, white wax wood. It works, it's great. Um, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Rattan staff, uh, this also works. You can, uh, they got like different training spear tips. You can Google them and you can put them on there or you can just put a piece of like red tape or something like that so that way you know which side is, is the spear. Um, we also just do staff work, so you want to have a good staff as well. Um, in Kali, there are two different forms of uh, spear fighting. There's the long spear, and then there's also the short spear. So you want a little bit longer spear that's taller than you, and then a shorter spear that's relatively about plexus height. Uh, that is pretty much uh, all the gear. Some sort of good gear bag, that way you can carry all your gear in. Um, backpack for your uh, gloves, water, all that stuff. Want to make sure that you uh, always have your water with you, maybe some sort of energy snack, something like that when you're training long hours like we do. Um, that way you keep your body hydrated, keep it energized, and, uh, and all that stuff. Um, as far as that goes, that is mostly what we train with here at Kali Center. Um, you know, then we get into like later down the road our first degree second degree then i kind of have my students you know grab a like a training a, a saber a rapier some of the more kind of spanish stuff we get into shield half shield full shield all that stuff so later on down our official curriculum it's not all filipino martial arts anymore um we kind of dive a lot into the iberian stuff and and all that because it's it's all the same mathematics it's the same mechanics, same geometry, all that good stuff. All right, so that kind of sums it up. That's all of the gear uh, primarily that we train with uh, that you're going to need at some point in your Filipino martial arts training. If you're just getting started, two most important things, uh, rattan training, a pair of rattan sticks, a pair of some sort of training knife, and then also make sure you got some sort of eye protection as well. It's always a good idea to protect the eyes. Um, you know, you only, you only come with one pair of those. So, um, and then everything else is just additives as far as Kali Center goes. Um, and then as you're kind of moving up through our inner triangle, if you want to train with us uh, through our inner triangle program, which is our official training program here at Kali Center, um, then at some point you might have to invest in some of the other training gear that I already showed and uh, went over. All right, so that covers that. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Uh, you Feel free to email me over at colliecenter.com. Just head on over to the site, click on where it says to email me, and then uh, just fill out the form and go ahead and send me your message. And uh, I'm happy to get back to you. Uh, you can always DM me on Instagram, Facebook, uh, over at Kali Center. Any of those, those are usually a little bit faster to get a hold of me than email is. My email, I get a whole bunch of emails, so it might take me... Uh, a few days sometimes it might even take me a, a week or so to uh catch up on my emails and get to you but uh if you want to take a little shortcut then go ahead and D dm me over on instagram that's usually the fastest way all right all right other than that that's your training gear so grab whatever you need check out some of the other videos i got here on the channel to help you get started and uh if you want a really good start to your training Go check out my 31 day challenge. I will eventually be doing another 31 day challenge or something like that. 
uh, one I can get to it. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Get outside, go train, have fun. Don't take it way too seriously. You got to make sure that you have fun because it's going to be frustrating at times. It's just kind of the process of learning Kali. Um, but if you stay focused, maintain that effort, stay persistent, you're going to get great. I'll see you next time.